Silver is a little bit more of this speculative beast and um, it's all over the place. It is nowhere near those highs, but silver has a great way of exploding and playing catch up. So for example, gold might rally from 2100 to 2600. You know, you're looking at 25% roughly uh, percentage move where silver could potentially, if it, it was to start to break out from, from this kind of high over here, you know, it could rally, uh, you know, 50, 60% even more uh, to catch up with gold. And it can do it in a very, very quick time. We saw that happen over here where silver just kind of was underperforming and, and struggling. And then suddenly it just blew up and took off. Earlier in the month, on May 4th, to be precise, silver investors watched the white metal move to a record $26.06 per ounce, its highest price since it hit $26.46 in February last year. The precious metal has given up those gains and is now back to March lows at $23.78 per ounce. Yet experts are optimistic that this won't be silver's only upside rally in 2023. In fact, several renowned analysts and veteran stackers like Michael Oliver and Rick Rule believe silver is properly positioned to outperform gold amid the growing economic concerns in the United States and the overall global economy. Historically, gold mining stocks and silver are the more volatile assets of the precious metals industry. An average investor accumulates gold first before considering its more volatile, less revered partner. But silver's volatility has pushed it to outperform gold multiple times, especially during periods of rising inflation and increasing inflation expectation. We've not seen a blow-off top rally in silver since gold started its secular bear market after the 2011 highs, not even in 2020 when gold hit new highs. But experts are convinced leading the popular precious metal has started a new secular bull market. They believe silver and gold stocks will now naturally outperform in the coming years. One expert analyst, the editor and publisher of The Daily Gold Premium, Jordan Roy Brine, believe silver will begin to outperform gold about a month after gold's breakout, as it did in 2019. He also predicts that the outperformance will be preceded by silver breaking a major resistance level, like its monthly and quarterly resistance, around $26 to $28. Chris Vermoylan, chief market strategist at thetechnicaltraders.com, has a similar outlook for the white metal in 2023. According to Vermoylan, a renowned technical analyst, silver is a late bloomer, but a speculative beast that always explodes and plays catch-up. Vermeulen says silver could gain 50 or even 60% in an impending massive rally to easily catch up and outperform gold. And he believes this could happen within a very short period. Before we listen to Chris Vermeulen's outlook for silver amidst the rising economic concerns in the United States, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications so you never miss any of our subsequent videos on various precious metals. Also, ensure you drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Everything helps with the YouTube algorithm and contributes to the channel's growth. Thanks, and enjoy the video. Silver obviously is far off the highs that we saw back in 2011. It has had a very nice run over the past couple of months. You know, it's it's kind of a, a late bloomer. I find silver uh, can can build these bases and and gold can keep moving up. I mean, when you think about where gold is, gold is like equivalent to silver trading up here. And that to me is because gold is the global safe haven. Everyone in the world naturally wants to accumulate gold. It's kind of the first thing that the average investor or individual kind of says if they're going to get into some alternative asset, a commodity, they think usually gold. Uh, so that's why, you know, there's a lot of fear in the market. People have moved to gold and gold's trading at those lofty pr pricing. Silver is a little bit more of this speculative beast and um, it's all over the place. It is nowhere near those highs, but silver has a great way of exploding and playing catch up. And that's what I think most gold investors and silver and gold miners are waiting for, including myself. I mean, this, this last super cycle in gold was pretty much is life changing for a lot of people. You get into a, uh, these little stocks and silver and the amount of percentage moves they, 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 they go is unbelievable. It's so good that, you know, it, unfortunately people don't want to sell it and they'll hold it through, you know, a decade hoping, you know, it's going to come back to life. The key is knowing where to pull money off and protect your positions. But coming back to silver, I do think silver um, will probably blow up and take off to the upside. It'll rocket higher uh, back up to those, that 50 level, which is, you know, significant more return than gold. Uh, but it's going to probably be a much more volatile ride. 
And uh, and when it happens, though, it, it is very quick. It, you know, it could be explosive. So I like gold and silver. Um, definitely, if I was to trade large, large sums of money, I would I would definitely split it between the two. Um, you know, you look at gold. A big day for gold is like a percent, a percent and a half. A big day for silver, like you move like three, five, eight percent sometimes in a day. Or, uh, so it is a little more volatile for you know, depending on what kind of assets you're using, trading capital or like long term investment capital. Uh, I like to try and keep volatility down in long-term large accounts. Uh, so silver, definitely want to be be careful there. But I think there's great potential for, you know, $60 or 60% return or so in silver uh, once we do get this breakout. And, you know, if we just quickly go back, if we do get this bigger pullback in the, in the stock market, uh, we could see silver. Maybe silver goes up and tests these highs again. Uh, but we could see silver easily just continue to trade you know, in this, this big range until the stock market has a reset, stocks, real estate, all those things kind of have a financial reset. Uh, precious metals are usually like the first sector, first commodity to really bottom. So even though the rest of the economy and the stock market might be falling, gold and silver should turn up first and then start their huge ascend. Uh, and that'll be a really good sign uh, for the economy. It'd be a good sign for the stock market, knowing that we're probably only a month or three away from a bottom in, in stocks. Uh, but I think there's going to be a lot of potential, but it might not happen just quite yet, uh, as we mentioned earlier. As a technical analyst, Vermeulen considers both sides of the charts. While he is convinced of some bullish moves for gold and silver in the coming months, he also analyzes what the flip side could look like, not just for precious metals, but also for stocks and other asset classes. According to the technical analyst, the U.S. stock market could be heading for a stage four decline necessitated by the coming recession. Vermeulen describes what's coming for the stock market as a complete financial reset, much like the tech and telecom bubble burst and the great financial crisis. Let's get back to the interview as Vermeulen discusses his gloomy prediction for the stock market and what it could mean for precious metals. I've got, I've got a, a, an infographic here that I've shared uh, with you before, but I'll just cover it again really, really quickly. And the key here is the stock market moves in these different, in four key stages. Stan Weinstein kind of coined this in his book, uh, many years ago, uh, you know, stage one is that basing stage. Like we saw gold, it, it was it was basing for several years, and then we finally saw a breakout uh, in 2019, and it started that that new super cycle that we're in now. Uh, so gold is kind of in this stage two major super cycle stage two, but the stock market is actually in this stage three topping phase. Is what is what I think we're in right now, and the problem here is. That usually means we have to go through a stage four decline. And a lot of people think 2022 was the bear market. Uh, and it, it was. I mean, it was a you know 20% plus pullback in stocks, which is considered a bear market. But a stage four decline is is like a financial reset where you know we've had so much going on, printing and stimulus. And I, I think we're going to see a big unwinding event. And the last two times that we had a stage four was the, the tech bubble burst. And then we had the financial crisis. Both of those were stage four. Both of those were life-threatening, um, you know, retirement-threatening situations. In fact, in 2008, 2009, there was like 8,600 suicides directly linked to the fall of equity prices. So a stage four decline, when I say there's going to be a reset, I mean, it's serious. It is a dangerous market condition. People lose their life savings. They lose their minds and and do really crazy things. So this is why I keep trying to harp on it. I, I really don't want it to happen, but I think it's coming and everybody's much better knowing what to do, be mentally prepared and have a game plan in place. Uh, so th this is kind of what we're looking for. And eventually when the stage four is coming close to a bottom, that's when we're going to start to see gold miners, you know, rip to the upside well before the market actually puts in a, a bottom. But during this decline is when gold, silver miners are going to pull back. And I mean, we've got to, you know, if we if we go back here and just take a look at the emotions of the market, uh, we're kind of in this complacency stage. People don't want to think, you know, the bear market has just started and that there's a whole lot more pain coming. Uh, and we were seeing a lot of people buy, um, accumulate stocks. A lot of money's been flowing into growth stocks, which is, uh, it's not surprising, but a lot of people are thinking the bear market is over. And, um, you know, we're we're in the loop of the market. So I think we have a better kind of gut feeling of what's going on. I, th I see a recession coming. I see a big correction coming. 
but the masses don't. They don't. They don't think the bottom's going to fall out and they're going to have a huge reset in their assets. Uh, but this is the stage we're going to go through. It's going to start to break down. They're not going to believe what's happening, and then they're going to be in denial. It's another 2008 all over again. Uh, I mean, you know, the, we're looking at potential five, six, ten years, maybe to recover from one of these. With the economy heading for a recession, according to experts' estimates and a grudging admission from the Federal Reserve, now might be the best time to invest in gold, silver, and other precious metals. There are also several long-term threats to the existing U.S. financial system, from CBDCs to the BRICS alliance, the banking sector crisis, the country's massive debts and excessive money printing, and many other critical issues that indicate that the economy is unsustainable and rigged to fail. Do you agree that gold is in a new secular market and silver is going to outperform after gold's breakout? Please drop your replies as well as your comments on Chris Vermeulen's analysis in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more insightful discussions and chart analysis. Thanks for watching.